media agencies fall over themselves to focus on women and only women in all areas of life. There are 18 candidates vying to be the president and Channel 4 News has been following the campaign of the only woman among them. And first woman speaker oh, on the horizon. The house is because we're elected democratic. No British woman has ever reached Formula One. Stoddart expects to be the first. And in India, as in the rest of the world, women are often among the lowest wage earners. Now the ILO is using a novel program there to open the door to decent jobs for women. In the UK, it's quite possible to watch 24 hours of television or listen to hours of radio or read an entire newspaper and not find a single story about men. In contrast, women receive massive coverage of their activities and issues with heavy emphasis on the very fact that it's women under discussion. Jane, wonderful. Oh, oh there's Kira again. Let's have fantastic. another look. Well, she does look lovely. Oh, that... The United Nations is also helping women in Zambia. But I also think women should have a right to choose and they should have a right to control their body and that they should have an alternative. An Afghan woman stands before a wall of men and tells them why she should be president. She says the 17 other presidential contenders, all of them men, just don't get it. What's it like to be in a city, surrounded by enemy troops, and being told this? The Americans are broadcasting loudspeaker instructions for all women and children to leave Fallujah, and that all men under 45 entering or leaving will be detained. How scared would you be as a man? As a young boy, he was sent off to fight in the Iran-Iraq war, as so many of these young boys were. He always wanted to be a painter, so he survived the war, but obviously it completely scarred him. What's it like for a 12-year-old boy in Afghanistan? conscripted into the army and taught how to use a machine gun. Who knows he might not live to see his 13th birthday. Well, all the women are uh, dressed in black, head to toe, walking five feet behind the men. What are the pressures and obligations on Middle Eastern men to support a family or else be ostracized as a failure? We don't hear much about these stories of men, but here the BBC covers a hugely important issue or whether or not it's demeaning to women to be described as girls instead of women. Instead of focusing on the slaughter of men in Iraq or Afghanistan, while women are protected from frontline roles, news sources want to tell us how difficult military life is for females. In Bosnia, the civil war has wiped out men so disproportionately that only 30% of the Bosnian population are men. What do the headlines tell us? Neck, bruised knuckles. But killed her. Strangled, I think. Too bad, good looking girl. Find ID. What does this mean? Too bad, good looking girl. Her death is more tragic because she's pretty. When a man dies, no policeman would ever say, too bad, handsome guy. In our society, a man's life is only important if he does something worthwhile. Only a woman's life is important in itself. There's hardly any point to men watching the news anymore, particularly on the BBC or Channel 4. It completely marginalises men, in denial of the very existence of men as human beings, except as criminals. What was starting to be common practice towards the blacks in the early 1900s, in a few decades' time became enshrined in law with the apartheid laws. And if men aren't careful, what is happening now with practice against men could well be in 10 or 20 years' time be enshrined in law so that men suddenly find they actually can't do certain things In Austria, there's a law that compensates women on divorce if the husband never helped them with housework. In Germany, one party has proposed a criminal law that men must share housework equally. In Spain, marriage law is being rewritten to make it grounds for divorce if the man doesn't do a share of the housework. It's also grounds to deny him access to his children in the event of divorce. There's more stuff going on in Spain, quite a bit more. Yeah. Um, one of the things is apparently not enough of the husbands do housework. Yeah. So they can do the garden and build the house and yeah, exactly, earn yeah. the money, but they're not doing enough dishwashing. That ha yeah. And so they're going to put it as a grounds for divorce. Oh, yeah. If he doesn't do enough dishes. Yeah. Well, in Austria, I think they've passed a law, haven't they? They've actually passed a law in Austria. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yes, where, where men have got to do their share of housework. And I keep thinking, housework? What the hell is it coming down to housework for? In Sweden, there's a proposal of a man tax. The idea is that men cost the economy more and so should pay more taxes. The idea that men cost the state more is ridiculous. The fact that Sweden actually has an economy, and indeed the fact that Sweden exists as a nation, is down to the work of men. In France, if a man calls a woman a bitch, 
who's committed a hate crime against women and can go to prison. Men in Costa Rica can now be sent to prison for up to 50 days for trying to chat up women. A new law says women can have men arrested for paying them unwanted compliments. Spain last year, it was all put as a jokey joke, but the, the new mayor, who obviously wanted to keep his position and secured the women's vote nicely, actually declared that I think a Wednesday or Thursday evenings, men would not be allowed to go out into their bars, into their pubs. And he had these women, believe it or not, dressed up in these pink outfits, and they used to go into these pubs, and if they found men in there, they would take their name and address down, and they would fine them, an on-the-spot fine. And these blokes actually used to cough up. And I looked at that and I thought, if you, if you joked about this 10 or 20, it would have been a joke, it would have been put up as a little sketch, wouldn't it, in a, in a, in a show. It had changed, and you'd have laughed about it, but that was a reality. And, and they said that the money collected was going to go towards women that suffer from domestic violence, but only men would have to pay it. So in, in two hits, they labelled men as the aggressors, and they also demeaned them by telling them they couldn't go out on a Thursday evening. When the tsunami hit Asia in 2004, news sources and charities fell over themselves to emphasise the female cost of the tragedy. Oxfam and others even sought to say that women were affected worse by the disaster. This is typical behaviour by charities in their efforts to extract donations. People care more about women. Rather than draw any attention to the scale of male deaths, or to the enormous numbers of men who risked their own lives to save survivors and who proceeded to reconstruct the area, the news instead wants to tell us that children were vulnerable to men in the resulting confusion. Orphanages are preparing themselves for a huge influx of children, but aid agencies are warning that paedophiles could try to exploit them. UNICEF's Director of Child Protection in Indonesia made this statement about the danger of male paedophiles based on nothing more than her own imagination. Here we're told of rescuers finding a baby, but the fact that all the rescuers are men goes unmentioned. Using sledgehammers and blowtorches, a team of rescuers tried to make a hole in the concrete rubble of a house buried under tons of mud. It seems that we much prefer to imagine crimes that men might do, instead of highlighting the heroism of men in front of our eyes. The misandry in the tsunami coverage is not isolated, it's a common occurrence. Following Hurricane Katrina, thousands of evacuees sheltered in a sports arena. What men were actually doing was protecting their families, saving lives and rebuilding the city. But the news had nothing to say about that. An organised gang of African rapists terrorised the English town of Northampton. Police said that the gang of men had raped three women and attempted to abduct two others. They issued identikit pictures and plastered Northampton with Females Be Alert posters. In all these stories, the assumption is that men turn into animals given the slightest chance. Women's accusations are taken at face value, no matter how outlandish. The headlines are freely published, with no need for evidence, because we've all been primed as a society, over decades, to instantly believe the worst of men, even after story after story are disproved. Here's Johnny! The media and government endorses these misandrous attitudes, the police in particular. As a result, we're ignoring our instincts and swallowing lie after lie about men. The modern and unspoken sense that all men are violent, abusive thugs, despite the reality of the men in every woman's life, or indeed man's life, their fathers, brothers, uncles, sons and lovers and friends. Every time we turn on the news, I kind of blame the media for what's going on wrong in the world right now, because they kind of just perpetuate stereotypes about people. They don't tell you that's what they're doing. They don't go, hey, this is what you need to think. But they know how people's brains work. What they do, they enforce all this shit, you know? Imagine in the morning, opening the paper. Turn on the TV and the first thing on the news? Radio discussion. Of course we know that most women aren't malignant child murderers, but some are. The question is, should those women be the only women we hear about on the news?